Hey Sarah, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Happy to be here. I'm amazing. I just saw you get off stage and I've already been a fan of your work. You're the first Arab and African woman to travel to space, but also the first Egyptian person to go to space. That's huge. <laughs> How does that feel? How does that title feel? It's surreal, to be honest. It's a responsibility that I hold very seriously. Um, it's not something that you grow up thinking that you would do at all, especially coming from our side of the world. So it's really, I'm very grateful. I'm honestly very genuinely grateful for everything. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here without the people that have supported me in my life, my parents. So it's, 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 a, it's an incredible journey. I think you make life is what you make of it, to be honest, so I think. And, and you've made a lot so far, and you're very young. Um, you're, you're, we're, we, we established that we're around the same age, yeah. so that is amazing. And you're, you're, even today, you're wearing your, your suits. So when we talk about being the first, I love how you also have a nonprofit to help other people come after you. Tell me more about your nonprofit. Yes, definitely. So for me, when I started getting into this, interested in the space field, it was really difficult for me to apply to the jobs that existed because they were all mostly located in the West. So, and because of my passport, having an Egyptian passport, I just legally could not apply to them. Even mm -hmm. if I'm fully qualified, even if I fit every single box and I tick every single box, I just cannot apply to them because of the laws that exist and make it so inaccessible. So um, after doing a lot of digging, trying to do a lot of research independently, reaching out to people from NASA, from here, from there, um, we, re we really realized that this is actually a problem that so many people are facing around the world. Mm -hmm. And I started talking to young graduates, uh, early careers, and speaking to people from different parts of the world and realized that this is actually a huge issue that people are facing. Mm -hmm. Not only that, a lot of companies around the US and Europe are facing a lot of trouble with hiring people because they have a, there's a lot more op job openings mm -hmm. than talented people or qualified people to fill these positions. So what I did then is I founded Deep Space Initiative, which combats exactly that. It combats this inaccessibility in the space field. And it does that by providing opportunities in research, education, and at the same time, in parallel, working on the legal side of things. So we're working on the policy and trying to educate Congress about why we need to be changing some of these laws, how they influence international collaboration, and like just generally, just the trajectory of the future of humanity, because without this international collaboration, we can't just be reinventing the wheel every time we're facing a problem. We need to be working with other entities around the world and continuing on you know, their work to be able to solve these bigger problems. Otherwise, we'll just not get to anything. Mm -hmm. So that's why DSI, I founded DSI. We've been partnering with so many people, incredible people. We have advisors from all over the world donating their time to support nice. our teams. We have around 303 members right now. Uh, we have 47 projects, 47 wow. research projects. Nice. From, with teams that range from 60 different nationalities. Okay. So we've been, we've been very fortunate to have an incredible team yeah. and we're currently fundraising, so really looking for support to be able to provide more support for our researchers nice. and educational material as well. Nice, so not only were you the first African to travel to space, now you're actually encouraging and finding opportunities for other people to follow you. I love that, but let's take it a step back. Like, what even inspired you to go to space? Like, what's, what was the mission behind it? Like, Tell me a little bit more about the beginnings. So for me, it was a little bit different because usually people tell you that they dreamt about being an astronaut since they were kids. But for me, it wasn't really that because it didn't really exist where I come from. Um, we didn't watch rocket launches on TV. We didn't have astronauts from our side of the world. They were all black, uh, white men, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, it was so different that, you know, you couldn't see yourself in that and you were always told that it's not for you. And when, when, you're, when you're growing up in an environment like that, it's so difficult to dream about it because it's just not a reality, mm -hmm. right? So No examples, but now you are that example. <laughs> thank you, and I try to, I really try to, try to do the most of it because I know what it's like, and I know what it's like to be told no, and I know what it's like to not see yourself in these positions. But it's really about, you know, and I love what Amina always says as well, the, the Deputy Secretary General, she always tells us to occupy our space. And that's so important. And it took me a really long time to, to, to do that, to be honest, because when, when, when you grew up in the communities that we grew up in, you're always told to be quiet, to be normal, to not be difficult, to like, just like fit the box, like just. So how, how did you now maneuver to wanting to be, or becoming an astronaut if there was no examples? before you? 
I had I was extremely curious, and I think coming from 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 here, like I think after moving around so much and seeing like a lot of a lot of things in the world, and like seeing like the problems that were actually existing in the world, um, it really just all of these questions that have been developing inside of me, they kind of like more shifted towards um, humanity and where it's going, and for me, my mission was to try to help humanity become multiplanetary in order for us to have these answers. Mm. This is just, you know, when you go through an existential crisis, you have a lot of questions about the world, about our origins. Mm -hmm. What is the meaning of everything, right? right? Like, find answers. And for me, that just pushed me to needing to, for humanity to become multiplanetary so that we have the technology and the capabilities that have these answers. Yeah. So that kind of just like drove this huge obsession for me. So it wasn't about, you know, the 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 side where like it was a dream growing up it's it's, it's just Your unfortunately curiosity. it wasn't that it was just it developed very naturally throughout my career after Love studying that. engineering and my masters and like working in the fields it just kind of like made perfect sense for it to be you know be you know just specific, that was the next specific. step right? yeah exactly so, I have, so hopefully you have an answer to my question since you were curious i'm also curious this is probably a question you get all the time but i want to ask what was the first thing you saw when you, when you, you know, were into space? What was the first thing that you say you saw, or, or like, how, feel, like, how did you feel, like, when you first was like, what did you see? <laughs> um, sitting on that, on the rocket, is one of the most incredible feelings in the world. And I think whenever I'm sitting with astronauts, like, we always talk about the countdown, the before liftoff, like, the feeling that you get. And when you think about it, we still kind of, like, get the same rush and the same feeling when you just try to remember it because it's just, it's, it stays with you forever. Mm -hmm. Like that feeling of you're strapped in and you have the, the last countdown before the rocket ignites and you're lifted off and you're like heading towards space. That feeling of anxiety, yeah. excitement or all the above? It's everything. It's just a, like, it's just a compilation of everything that you had done and, and been through. And it's, it's both weight lifted off your shoulders, but also like a few other tons kind of added more on top of it. And then you look, at the window and we had these beautiful big windows next to each of our seats and you see like the ground moving far 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 away until you just don't see it in a matter of like seconds to minutes um. which is crazy and you when you go far enough you see the changes in colors and it goes from light blue to darker blue to purple and then black um. and that's the only thing telling you that you're in space and that kind of just like changes your perspective of the world it changes your your view and the scale of everything and the relationship between space and earth so it changes all of that and i was sent to space to analyze the overview effect which is this change in perspective that happens to you when you see earth from space because we haven't biologically evolved to like our brains haven't biologically evolved to, to experience this so it does kind of like it kind of breaks your reality and when you come back you have to put it back together and for me, it was hugely impactful in ways that, more ways than I thought wow. were possible. So um, I want to ask the question, like, how did your perspective change? Like, this is our last question because I'm getting the like, how did your perspective, like, you saw the Earth from space. Like, how did, how did it change your perspective of the world? Um, so as an engineer, I had to kind of come back when I came back. I had to break it down into smaller points to try to understand why I'm feeling a certain way and why my why my view of the world has changed in this way or that way. And because I've always heard about astronauts talk about the overview effect, and they were all from the West. So they come with their own perspective, and it's not the same as ours. We know that the lines on the map were created by old white men who have like separated these. So, you know, and we know like the effects of colonization and the effect of those borders on the map and your passport dictating whether you can or cannot do something in the world, right? So we have lived through that. So for me, I was wondering, and I have created Deep Space Initiative to fight that. So for me, and you know, when astronauts from the West see Earth from space and they don't see the borders on the map, they kind of like shift their perspective. But for me, because I have lived through that and I have been fighting for that. I, I was wondering like how that would be for me because I wasn't really listening, like I wasn't, no one from our side of the world had said anything about what it was like, right? So for me, it took me a really long time to try to process and understand that. And like I really tr developed the sense of connectedness with all of humanity. Like we're incredibly powerful as human beings. We're, we can have such a big impact on the world. We have such a huge responsibility towards one another and towards Earth itself. You see this very, very thin blue line 
and it's so bright against the blackness of space and it's the only thing protecting us. Mm. So you develop this sense of responsibility towards humanity and Earth. Mm. And at the same time for me, I was looking at the blackness of space from the other side and I felt this really strong connection to it. And it made sense because it felt like this is where we're coming from. And it's more like a, of a poetic way where like it's just, I'm, come, I'm going back to where I came from and it felt like home. Wow. Wow, that's I like how you have a unique perspective from the West, uh, and then obviously you're being African and Egyptian descent. How do we now connect what you're doing uh, to help Africa become more unstoppable and more competitive? I think Africa's doing incredible things right now, and I think what's if we continue on the trajectory that it's going up now, with what Gabby's doing, with everything that's happening with with global with UN Global Impact as well. I mean, we can definitely reclaim our power in the world, which we, we need to be doing. Because I feel like Africa has so much potential, has so much capacity, has, has literally everything it needs to sustain itself. Mm -hmm. So it's not missing anything, mm -hmm. right? The only thing that it, that's happening around the world is that a lot of other countries are trying to take advantage of it. And that's just very transparently put, right? Like, they're, that's exactly what's happening on the ground, and that's what's really push, pulling it back. So if we work together, we come together, we really like have that understanding and belief in each other and ourselves. That's kind of, that's what we really need because this belief in ourselves and in one another is so powerful and that's kind of, that's going to be what pushes up forward. Thanks. Thanks so much, Sarah, Thank for you being so with much. us. Thanks for sharing your story. Thank Thanks you. for being with Gabby and, and have, talking on the panel here.